the next, the next uh, speaker is also a young entrepreneur who saw a lot of opportunity in the continent of Africa. Um, you might not know this, but there's actually a shortage of uh, coders in, uh, in Europe. We have a lot of projects that we want to do, but there's not always enough skilled coders. So um, Bart Leisner went to Uganda and he saw that there's so many people there who, who want to do this, who are working on it, uh, but just don't have the resources, don't, they don't have the opportunities, uh, the access to the right uh, material, the right software to m actually make this happen. So, you know, being a young business uh, entrepreneur that he is, he saw oh, an opportunity. Okay. <laughs> and uh, please give it up for Bart Leisner. Thank you so much. Is it already on? It's on, all right. Thank you so much for the introduction. I didn't hear the introduction, so <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, today I will tell my story how we are trying to create meaningful work uh, for skilled African software developers. Uh, my name is Bart Leisner. I'm the lead of uh, Tunga, which is uh, the name of our startup. And Tunga means uh, in Swahili to build, but more on an artistic level. Uh, and our developers really feel and express that they trying to build something, trying to build a better uh, software, but also better life for themselves. So it's several layers, uh, we believe. Um, before I tell the story how I got involved, I have to tell how this idea originated. So this part of the story, I'm not involved yet in the, in the process. Uh, but here on the slide, you can see on the right side, uh, my partner in crime, Ernesto, and he's actually the father and the ID maker of this uh, startup. He had a startup uh, of his own called Mobber, and Mobber is a Bitcoin wallet system, as there are many, but his uh, Bitcoin wallet system is different because he's, uh, his uh, Bitcoin wallet system uh, facilitates collaborative um, payments, so crowd payments. So I think most of you know GitHub. Can I see hands? GitHub. Okay, so uh, if we work together with all the people that know GitHub on one issue, uh, it's really hard to keep track who did what, right? So the algorithm of Mobber uh, calculates who wrote which line. So actually when the issue is closed, you get paid in, in, order, in, <laughs> in order with the line of your contribution, right? Uh, so he had this great technology, but he didn't have a marketplace. So he's trying to find a partner um, that can facilitate a marketplace, right? Uh, Ernesto also has a background in development aid. So he thought, wouldn't it be awesome if you could do this in a place where the impact will be great, right? Where we can rate jobs via such a platform uh, in developing countries. So he already worked uh, several times in Africa. So he searched online, okay, who's involved with coding in Africa? And then he found uh, Butterfly Works. Butterfly Works is a foundation here in Amsterdam. And they uh, started schools in uh, Nairobi, the first school. It's called Nairobits. And as you can see on that map, uh, there are now seven schools. Uh, Nairobits was founded in 2000, um, so that's 16 years ago. So there's a big alumni group with coding skills, right? So there was the match. So then uh, the equation was the dream of a collaborative platform for software tasks. And at the same time, uh, we could provide jobs for the alumni of those schools, right? So it's a win-win. Um, so now I will tell how I got involved, but up to now I didn't tell my story. Um, so I was, back when this was all uh, thought of, I was still in university, and I was lucky enough to do my uh, master thesis research in Tanzania. Um, so here you can see on the first picture me doing research in, uh, in Dar es Salaam. I did uh, research on small business development in the clothing industry. Um, and that gave me one opportunity to be able to go to Uganda and start this. And the other thing was a meetup with Ernesto in Barcelona, which is the second picture. We met in this very dark restaurant. Um, and there we got to talk and, and Later on, I posted a message on Facebook in a group where he was also in, saying, okay, I'm going to Africa. I don't want to leave after six weeks. Does, everybody, uh, does anybody know a cool project that I can work on, right? So he called me the next day and said, I'm working on this cool ID. We don't have funding. We don't have a really 
a specific uh, concrete business plan either or ID, uh, but do you want to go to Uganda uh, and try to start this? So of course I said yes. Uh, so then I went to Uganda. Uh, this is actually the first picture I took. As you can see, it's not a really shabby place. It's really a beautiful country. And by the time I didn't know anybody there, I didn't know anybody there in tech or whatever. So I started uh, uh, like exploring the possibilities, meeting a lot of people. I started with one of the schools that Butterfly Works founded in uh, Kampala, it's called Kampa Bits. And there I started building a network, right? To see, are there coders? Are, uh, is there a community? Is there quality, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so in like two months, I already knew a lot of people. People there are very open, very friendly, very welcoming. Uh, so I attended a lot of uh, tech meetups. So here in, in the middle on the top, you can see a geek night, which is uh, once a month in Kampala, they organize uh, an event where all the tech guys from Kampala come together and discuss the latest frameworks in uh, programming and stuff like that. Uh, and also the picture below, you can see the full team of Butterfly Works and Ernesto and I with uh, the guy who uh, actually chose the name for, for our business called Tunga, Stash. Uh, so that was the first couple of months. It was really yeah, more exploring the possibilities instead of like really building a business, so that came later. Uh, so at that point we thought, okay, uh, we have somebody in Africa, so that's me, we have now a little bit of funding in the Netherlands, uh, let's start a business. Uh, but we had several assumptions that we need to validate before we said, okay, this can be a real business, right? So the first assumption that we needed to test was there are enough awesome developers in, uh, in Africa, right? and especially in East Africa, because that's where we operate at this moment. Uh, so what I found was that w there, was a lot of co uh, there was a lot of coding capacity. Uh, this picture is taken in one of the tech hubs in Kampala, where I also stayed for uh, four and a half months. Um, and, it, and what I also noticed is that are, there's a lot of collaboration going on, right? So people coding together, which is most of the time the case, but also there it's like really embedded. So that was also in line with our philosophy of a collaborative working uh, uh, space uh, online. Uh, and here you can see another meetup, and then more pictures. So we had that one validated pr pretty soon, right? There are enough people. So then the second uh, assumption that we needed to validate is there are enough businesses in the West. So we started here in the Netherlands and also across Europe uh, that are in need of extra coding capacity. This was actually the easiest one to uh, validate because if you talk to anybody in tech, they're always in need of coding capacity. Um, so we tried to build a solution for that, of course, with flexible access, et cetera, et cetera. I will talk about it later. Uh, so how we validated that assumption was going to events. I don't know if, you, if some of you know Uprise Festival in Amsterdam. It's twice a year. Uh, all the startups in the Netherlands come there to showcase our product and we asked a lot of startups are, are you in need of uh, coding capacity and nine out of ten times the answer was yes right so that one was also validated so then the third uh, assumption that we had was okay we have coders there we know there's demand but are those businesses also interested in uh, working remotely with African developers right so this was actually one of the hardest ones to validate because a lot of people say, yeah, we really like your concept, really like your ID, but do they, do they put money where their mouths are, right? Uh, so then we uh, did a first, uh, not the first, but also the only uh, uh, crowdfunding campaign. We said, okay, you can uh, support us, and in return for your support, in terms of cash, you get uh, coding hours, right? So at the same time, we could test our developers as well. So 15 businesses decided to try it out. So that was really good. We did this in two weeks. So for us, that was also like a small validation of that assumption that there was market for it and that they were willing to work with African developers. Uh, and also what helps is that in uh, the news, also Africa is promoted more often and more often. So here are some, of, uh, uh, of po uh, some posts of uh, positive news about African tech. Um, 
So then the fourth uh, assumption that we need to validate was the quality, right? So now we had, uh, with the crowdfunding campaign, we had 15 paying clients, and now we have to serve those, right? So we work with uh, a first pilot batch of coders, which were around 20 developers in, uh, in uh, mostly Uganda. Some of them uh, were in Kenya. Uh, and we, try, okay, we tried uh, to match them, right, and see if the communication went well, the quality of the code was good, et cetera, et cetera. And that, was the, that pilot phase went really good. So that was for us a really big win uh, because um, we heard about, okay, there's coding skills, and they said to me, I know this, and I created this A, B, and C, but now we can, now we really put them to the test, and that succeeded. So that was really good for us. Uh, so you can see here two of our developers, Roy and Benjamin. Um, and then the last, um, the last assumption that we need to validate, because we wanted to build an online platform where businesses can post software tasks, and that they connect directly with developers. So we had to validate if our solution, such a platform, uh, is actually something that appeals to businesses here in the West, right? Um, so we started out creating uh, MVP. The first how we started, we didn't have anything. We didn't have a platform. We didn't build anything. We just said, okay, do you have Git, uh, GitHub issues? We will link uh, developers there with your GitHub issues. That went well as the first pilot round. The second one was a, was a really uh, amateuristic um, platform made on, I don't know, if you guys, you know, BodyPress. It's like a really easy social network uh, uh, framework. Uh, and we matched there the developers with uh, businesses. So that was the first one. And then we get a lot of learnings out of this platform, which is really like low standard. So we learned a lot, okay, what are the need of the client in terms of functionalities on our web, uh, on our uh, platform, right? And then we build now, uh, we are still building it. Uh, the second version looks like this. It's already live, but we are constantly improving, right? So I just been off and on with my developers uh, setting up the next sprint for the next week uh, to build more functionality. So we're constantly improving based on customer feedback, right? So that is the story up till now. Uh, so what our business is at the moment is we have a market network for software tasks. Uh, so it's really a place where clients and developers uh, connect uh, directly. And we uh, offer flexible access. And how we do that is we set up our platform as a social network. So as a developer, you can become friends with other developers to create teams but you can also start following companies. So if a new uh, company registers on our platform, uh, developers can say, okay, I have the same stack as uh, the stack they need. For example, I'm a Ruby developer and they need Ruby developers. Uh, I will say, hey, can I follow you? I think I can work for you, right? So businesses can create a team before they even post a task, right? So every time you post a task, there will be enough relevant developers already in your team that can work on it. So with this, we can f uh, facilitate flexible access. Uh, so on our platform, collaborations are possible. So traditional marketplaces for software tasks mostly offer only a business linking to one uh, developer, right? So with collaborations, there's more, uh, more eyes looking at the project. So there's more quality control and also collaboratively learning together, right? So developers that are senior teach uh, junior developers on our platform how to work in complex uh, frameworks and so on and so forth. Um, what we also have is we have a payment system that can facilitate payments to Africa uh, because Africa is not yet connected to the global economy of, so of online work because also it's really hard to facilitate payments. So we really stripped down uh, all the payment flows and said, okay, how can we integrate this uh, most effectively? Uh, so we looked in Africa, a lot of people or most people, I think 80% don't, uh, do not use their bank account very often, but they use their mobile money. So what we have is here uh, mobile banking, just with your uh, uh, debit uh, account, they have uh, credits on their phone. 
So they pay uh, in shops, they pay with mobile money, which is actually you send a text message to somebody and he receives a piece of code and that code equals an amount in, uh, of money. So that's really embedded already in Africa. So we thought, okay, how can we pay developers in their own currency that they are uh, familiar with? So we send Bitcoins to Africa and in Africa they convert it back to mobile money. So even if you're a developer and you don't have a bank account, you can still work on our platform. So we can also create impact where it's most needed, right? Um, so up to now it sounds like, uh, okay, it is going very well, only successes, but we also face challenges, right? So uh, one of the challenges that, uh, that we face is not the coding quality, but also the communication and uh, also the dedication of the developers. So for them, it's really hard to be very assertive and proactive and say, okay, I see you want uh, A, B, and C um, based on the task, but I think it can be uh, X, Y, Z, right? So for them, it's really hard. So sometimes they don't work efficient. So we really uh, are giving workshops there based on communication and uh, how to be assertive and how to work with international clients, especially with Dutch clients who are really uh, want you to be uh, <laughs> more or less aggressive in your tone of voice, right? Like, I want this, I need this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so these pictures were taking, uh, taken nine uh, days ago. Just came back on Monday from Africa. Uh, and we gave here workshops in uh, Kampala and Nairobi with our, um, uh, with our network of uh, coders. And uh, this is the community we have in Uganda. Uh, I spend most of my time in Uganda. So a lot of friends of mine uh, on this picture. So there's a already a vivid community uh, there. Uh, so our dream for the future is that we can facilitate uh, constant work for 100 developers within the next year. Up to now, we worked with around 30 developers, and we have 90 developers on our platform. Uh, but we want to like have uh, a daily flow of tasks for those developers for around 100. We want to expand to three new countries within Africa in the next two years. And like the bigger goal uh, of our uh, startup is to uh, put Africa on the map for software development. Uh, uh, and that they, uh, that they also get access to well-paid jobs, which they don't have at the moment. So that's our uh, goal. All right, that was it. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions? I, uh, I suggest that we take a moment to set up the next speaker while we uh, do a round of questions. Anybody? Uh <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to find out if you have a lot of female developers that are interested in Tunga, or you're just getting male developers that are keen. I don't see a lot of like females there. Uh, actually, in the photo, there's, there's one lady. There's only one lady, but we have several. Uh, but still, it's qu uh, kind of hard to... Uh, to find a lot of female coders there, uh, but we are trying to uh, to increase that number. But with the schools where they teach coding, there's a female to male ratio of 50-50%, so that's really good. But most of the times they choose to go more into designing instead of programming because, I don't know, it appeals more to them. So, yeah. So you think uh, girls uh, in Africa are more progressive when it comes to learning technology, learning how to code? Um, I cannot say for 100% that that's the case, but what I know is that uh, if I, when I was in the, in the tech hub in Kampala, there was, there were a lot of ladies. They're in tech, but they're not into programming, so they do more uh, 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 starting up and uh, um, um, starting up and being innovative with certain solutions, but not like hardcore programmers. And we are targeting uh, like really the programmers. But there are a lot of uh, female entrepreneurs there, yeah. Great. Awesome. Any other questions? I see a careful hand. <laughs> Which countries uh, are those where you plan to expand? Uh, so with uh, the, bits, uh, the BIT schools, they're going to expand to Egypt, Nigeria, and Somalia. Uh, and we attracted also funding to follow those schools. So we're going to start from the beginning uh, also uh, uh, attracting coders there. So in those three countries, yeah.
That's true. That's true. Uh, so Why did you choose for Uganda? Uganda is actually right. yeah. Uganda is not that peaceful if you listen to the news. But I lived there for eight uh, eight months, and it's actually quite peaceful. But the, the government is a little bit unstable, uh, and Kenya is really stable. Uh, so we choose those two countries first. Uh, but we uh, attracted funding to go to the other three countries. So, for example, Somaliland, it's not stable at all. But there is also where we can create the most impact. So that's why we go there. Yeah. All right. Does that answer your question? <laughs> you have a lot of questions. That's okay. We like some engagement here. That's cool. They follow from one another. So uh, do you think you can find the resources you want in these countries, in, in the new countries, I mean, like Somalia? So we're going to do the same approach as we did in Uganda and Kenya. Uh, we're going to go there and just building a network and, and, st and uh, uh, see if the, the cone capacity is there. So I have really high hopes for uh, Nigeria because I know there's a really big community of coders there. Egypt, I know also a lot of uh, people working there in tech. But Somaliland is going to be a little bit uh, uh, difficult. But at the same time, for me, that's also like a really big challenge. And uh, I think I'm really looking forward to, to explore the possibilities there. And if you can create jobs there, it will, be a, will have more impact if you create a job in, in, in for example, uh, Egypt or Nigeria. So it's more of a challenge, but also more of a reward afterward, probably. So. All right. I think we're, uh, we're, we're ready for the next speaker. If you want to continue this conversation, uh, I hope you're available next to the stage. People can come up to you Definitely. and ask some questions. We also have a gift for you, so don't, don't uh, forget to pick that up. <laughs> uh, please give a warm applause for Bart Leisner.